Welcome to Mentorous Live. My name is Pedzi Chimbwanda, and as you know, our goal with this show is to bring about a different narrative through our guests who are into business with their careers and who are making an impact in their communities. And we hope that we can inspire you to pursue your own. Now, a leading entrepreneur, our guest today is a disruptor, and he believes in soaring high by owning your own story and succeeding as your life depended on it. Starting off with a humble auto mechanics business and raising through the entrepreneurship ranks, Chamu Chiwanza is evidently now living the Zimbabwean dream, believing that you can only make a change when you're in the system and willing. This has been his influence to grow all the spheres he's in, both political, business, and social. He's a voice in the boardroom as a fintech guru, a venture capitalist, and a board member to Zifa. Chamu says his goal is to impart knowledge to the future generation. And his passion for the younger generation is seen in his initiative, The Shift, which brings about young entrepreneurs for them to listen to influential voices. But guess what? The most phenomenal thing about today's interview is Chamu never does interviews. And he hasn't had one in over 11 years. And that's an honor to us. So Mentors Life, get ready. Mr. C, C. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to you introducing me and I'm trying to think, Maybe I'm gonna meet another chamu and uh, <laughs> surprise you're talking about me. Yeah, man. Hey, we are so honored. Thank you. Thank Thank you very it's much. a long time to not be in front of a camera yeah, or on the I'm, radio. I'm a bit camera shy. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the show. Thank this you is very Mentors much. Live. We are to your disposal in terms of your knowledge and your wisdom. Thank you very much. But Thank we you. wanna know yeah. how did everything start? Where did you see, where did you come from? Well, I come from a place, uh, a dusty place called Mavuku. Uh, that's where I was raised uh, in a very humble family. And uh, I think in a nutshell, that's where it was started. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. But you know what's the most phenomenal thing is you never let your background hold you back. You, you made sure that you stay relevant. Does background hold anyone back? But you know, it's an excuse a lot of people use, eh? Why would they use that excuse? I think if you're born poor, the more the reason why you should succeed. I like that, I like that uh, ideology. Absolutely. Has I mean, that been your, your fuel that's, for the that's success? That's my major driving force. I mean, if, if, if there's a statement going around in say, cause these days that if you're not born in a rich family, a rich family must be born out of you. Wow. I like that. I, you know, it's actually my first time hearing it, and I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really like yeah. it. But you know, I, we've, we've, we've heard that you are into, you're a serial entrepreneur. Yeah. Meaning that you, every business, you are into it. Do you have like a certain business type that you choose to get into? Of course, we do a lot of due diligence before we venture into a business. But um, I, I wouldn't say I venture into every business right now. But I'm, I'm a financier. Okay. And, and, and part of the of the work that I do is I, I'm forced to invest in other people's businesses yeah. uh, in, 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 in many ways than, than, than one, because one can be direct capital injection, two can be order financing, okay. um, three can be, you know, supplies, like we're working with a certain big mine in, in Wanki, uh, where we, we supply fuel all the time yeah. and and we supply them and, and sometimes they fail to pay and we end up having to negotiate for a for equity and so it's not yeah. direct investment it's, it's by default so I, I right now I'm, I'm i'm involved in 17 companies wow yeah that is multiple streams of income yeah. you know i want to be you when i grow up it's it's not it's not it's not all consistent uh, income i mean okay you sit in a lot of board meetings yes but uh Sometimes the companies actually might be running serious or perennial losses. So mm -hmm. business is, is, is opening a Pandora's box, really. Okay. Uh, you, there are two things to it. It's either you're going to make a profit or you're going to make a loss. Okay. So if you look at it from that angle. So investing in a lot of companies is, is not always rosy. Mm -hmm. Because not all the 17 companies will be making profits. And of course, there's been rumors that for you to be who you are or to get to where you are, it was based, of course, with, uh, because of your mentor or a partner or a friend, uh, Philip Chiangwa, and many attest that Chamu would not have been Chamu if it wasn't for him. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I would have not have been me if it wasn't for him uh, because of his mentorship. I mean, um, 
uh, there's a lot of things that they don't know about uh, Mr. Chiangwa. And, uh, mm. But you see, there's no one who gives you money or a business. That's, that's, that's where the whole uh, African mentality loses it. I mean, if you're working with somebody who's already got money, they want you to compli compliment them, not to complicate them. Wow. You know okay. what I mean? So you must then show your value show what you have to offer, that you can do deals, you can strike deals and so forth. But you see, as Africans, we always want to hide behind, I uh, know he works with Chiangwa, so he makes money and so forth. I mean, Chiangwa has been around for many years and trust me, he's known a lot of people. But uh, who has been his most success story? It's Chamu Chiwanza. Wow. And the question might be, why was it that Chamu managed to break through when others couldn't? Yeah, that's, that's a question. Yeah, so it's not about, um, he comes with deals for me and say, Chamu, do deals. You know. okay. Sometimes, you know, I have to be creative. And, 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 and all the 17 companies that I've mentioned, it's only one company that he's a chairman of, that is involved in all the other 16, he's not involved in all of them. He knows nothing about them. Mm. So, <laughs> so we, are, we, are, we are pretty much a distance from, in terms of doing business. But, uh, but I'm in perception, yes, it's built around. Okay. And I make no apologies. I mean, the guy has been a great mentor. He's, he's, he's filled with um, very unusual uh, tactics in business. He's a, he's a master tactician. He knows when to strike, when not to strike, what to say, what not to stray. And I think because you, a lot of people, will s if, if you are blessed as he is, and because he's so talented in being tactful in business, I think it's a thin line between a superstar and, and a madman. Wow. So people will see him dancing and people would like to call him a clown. <laughs> um, and, I, and I think to a certain extent he is a clown because if you are that much of a genius in something, it's a thin line, you become another Dambuzo Marichera or very weird like Michael <laughs> Jackson or something. So I think he's our own version of that in business. And talking about all your businesses and seeing the success that comes with them, would, okay, being politically correct, yeah, with all the other business young business people out there. Yeah. They're popping bottles, buying massive cars, showing off this and that. Yeah. Why aren't you on social media? Because I, uh, it's a waste of time for me. Really? Okay. I don't have time. My day has only got 24 hours. And I, I don't have time to be standing on a car and, and posting a car or a house or business class seat and then you know, my mentality always runs way beyond what people see. You are in a, in a club popping champagne. I see you popping champagne. My mind runs to say, someone is making money. Who owns that company which manufactures these champagnes? That's me. So if you're sitting in a business, mm. business class and then booth and then you send that picture, I, I don't see just a person. I, I try to understand who is manufacturing this small booth or who owns this airline. Even better, you're sitting in a business class, but there's somebody who's flying in a private jet. Oh, yes. And there's somebody, even better, even if you're in a private jet, there's somebody who manufactures the private jets for people like you who want to be flamboyant. So I think, I think a lot of yeah. people who are on social media are serious <laughs> jokers to me. <laughs> serious jokers, I mean. And besides the jokers, yeah. in Zim, yeah. who would you say are some business people that you think are doing pretty well? Young guys. They're not, there. Not I mean, the, they're there. I mean, uh, they're a lot, man. To but say. we've never seen you with them. Is it that you're antisocial? Or no, no, no. no. I, I, you I, don't have the time. All, most of the guys that you know to be very popular in Zimbabwe, young guys who are successful, whether real or perceived, they they are um, friends of mine. I mean, um, friends of mine. Some of them came through my hands. Wow. Yeah, they have friends. We talk with them. Um, I talk with them most of them. Most of them. Ninety-five percent of them. Mm. All those who are running through your mind right now. <laughs> I talk to them. <laughs> oh, those ones and those yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. So they, okay. they are, we, are, we are all, we are, I'm very much connected to them. I'm very much. Just that we live a different lifestyle. I, I, I'm an off back, you know, from a behind the camera kind of a guy. I, I, I don't, I don't believe in, in flaunting my wealth. I mean, I, I did Tory time when my house and my cars was assumed to be someone else's um, uh, Superman one um, yeah house. I, I, I don't know. It was a nightmare for me, and and the, my name was not even appearing. But just <laughs> seeing the picture there was just a nightmare for me. So it goes to show you yeah. um, the kind of person that I am. Chama, I think you've been asked this question so many times. Yeah. How much are you worth? 
in terms of what? Money. Hamula, <laughs> Papa. <laughs> because know. you know what? This is the thing. You are very generous. Mm. And at times I think it's also used against you. Yeah. Like uh, in a recent article where they said that they were disappointed that Chamu didn't splash money when they invited him for an official launch. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you get so much hate uh, like that. Yeah. But how much are you worth? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I've never been in business for profits, really. I've never been motivated by the fact that I want to have more money than anybody else. You mm -hmm. know? My, my whole concept of being you know, successful, thriving to be successful is to change someone's lives. Okay. So uh, I've never been the one to say I want to be the richest person Zimbabwe has ever seen. But I will say this. I want to be the person in Zimbabwe who will spark the brain that will be the richest person Zimbabwe has ever seen. Wow, wow. I hope yeah. you, I can be one of those <laughs> candidates. <laughs> now speaking about sparking brains, yeah. the shift. Yeah. It started off, people thought that it was yet again another um, opportunity to go and, we use their words in media, show off. Yeah. But it's very difficult to show off consistently like that. Yeah. And then to be invited and launch in the UK. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the shift and your vision with that. Well, I mean, there's a, there's, there's a missing gap in Zimbabwe. Um, and the missing gap is uh, we have turned more political than economic, uh, economical in this country. And, okay. and what runs our lives day to day is not really politics. It's economics. Mm. And there's a difference. And, and, and you can sit at your house and, and, and be cursing the government every single day of your day. But that's never going to bring bread on your table. Okay. So... Why are you supposed to be using that energy to curse? Think about how you can change your life and try to make a dollar out of 15 cents. That's, that's, the, that's what we're trying to do with the shift to say, you know what, we are Zimbabweans and, and, and it's, politics cannot be in our favor or can be in our favor, or depending on which political party you, 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 come, you come from. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we meet from all different political parties in the same hospital, in the same school, in the same club, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and spending the same money. So we, are, we, we you must just come together at the end of the day and talk about money. If the people for the past, God knows how many years, meet every Sunday, some Tuesday, even Wednesday, and interrogate the Bible. Mm. Every single day, verse by verse, the, the pastors, the prophets, they interrogate the Bible. Why can't we meet for a change and interrogate how money is made? Interrogate money. Gentlemen, how can we break this barrier? So my, 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 my own, uh, what really pushed me to start the shift is the fact that as black people, we've got a problem. I mean, issue of making money is a taboo. Okay. And you are not allowed in, in, in our culture, uh, particularly if you're Zimbabwean, to, to, to stand in front of people and say in their face, I've got money. Yes. Ah, uh, it's, 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 <laughs> you're not allowed to do that. I mean, it's, 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 hide behind the bushes. Tell us you don't have it. We must just see that you have it, but don't tell us. And that's the culture. And we want to, we want to break that culture. Mm -hmm. Those who have got it must come out wow. and tell us how they've made it. You know, yeah. help other people to also make it. I mean, there are countries in this world where there is 60 to 70 percent rate of millionaires. Yes, in a country, so many millionaires. Luxembourg has got very much rich people, but it's a very small community. How do they do that? How can we ensure that Zimbabwe, with only 12 point something or 14 million people, can sh create few millionaires so that, you know, Things we change. break the barriers? Yeah. And, okay, like speaking of even the percentages of those that are millionaires out there, it's, it's actually very difficult to get in touch with you because yeah. you, you travel a lot on yeah. business and all that. I yeah. think 40% of the time, or if not more, yeah. you are out there. Yeah. What have you observed as a difference uh, between the entrepreneurs in the first world yes. and our Zimbabwean entrepreneurs? And what's holding us back? Uh, the problem with Zimbabwean entrepreneurs is I think Instagram has become our modern colonizer. Mm. Uh, they succeed for people to see. Okay. They don't succeed to satisfy their own economic desires, needs, and aspirations. It's, it's I want to buy a car so that one uh, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to build this house with one and, and And that has killed a lot of our young entrepreneurs, some of them with very good potential. Yeah. But they are so enshrined in trying to prove a point. 
Because success to me is not having money today and then two years down the line you're broke. It's okay. being consistent in being successful. That's, that's the, the biggest yardstick in, 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 in business that a lot of our entrepreneurs have failed. Mm. So to all, the difference between like, I've got friends in Nigeria, one of my partners in one of my businesses is a young Nigerian millionaire. And the way he thinks and the way he talks is completely different from what we get from Zimbabwe. I mean, they think I had, I, I've always said to my friends here in Zimbabwe, we must be build institutions with money. Okay. Let's build institutions, let's build schools, let's, let's build institutions that will last a lifetime. Not just money that we spend buying popping beverage and moye mm -hmm. and, and driving a Rolls Royce, and then you think, would know you have made it. No. <laughs> and also in your journey as an entrepreneur over the years, um, what would you say was one of your, the major mistakes you've made growing up and you learned from it? And how did you get over it? I, I, I've never made mistakes. I, or, or everything that I've done according to what was not my plan, I've never called it a mistake. Okay. It has been a lesson. Nice. So, nice. so everything that didn't happen according to plan, not a, a mistake. <laughs> mistake. It was I like that me, it, was a, it was a lesson. Okay. I learned from that. And what was one of your most uh, or major lessons that you've learned? If there is there something you could call a major yeah. or everyday lesson? Well, I can't pick up one, but I can just say from business, one thing that I have learned is never borrow money. Never borrow money. We don't owe anybody any money. It's business. All my, most businesses have got full control in the business that I told you. Mm -hmm. I don't like borrowing from anybody. Wow. You become a prisoner if you borrow. If you borrow. You're, you're a prisoner of somebody wow. forever. But this is contrary. Okay, not contrary as such, but you own a fintech company. Yeah. You're microfinance. Yeah. You lend people money. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. Because I understand the concept of imprisoning them. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So I would rather be the one who imprisons them than you being, being imprisoned. imprisoned. <laughs> That's smart. <laughs> I think we need to really take a break with this one. <laughs> we'll be back just now. Welcome back to Mentors Live. Today we are joined by a man who says his lifestyle is not luxury. It's a lifestyle. Chamu, speaking of luxury yeah. and lifestyle, yeah. there's always been this rumor that your cars were super money ones, yes. yeah. your houses and all that. Yeah. Why is it that everyone kind of attests the stuff you have to someone else the two things it's either somebody just got it all wrong and just thought this has to be superman one zero or somebody seriously underestimates me wow okay yeah so doesn't that nudge you to then uh, speak out no or is it a trap oh no why should i speak out i mean i've got nothing to prove everything that i have uh, it's 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 it's, it's it's not for public consumption. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Mm. But nonetheless, we are in a segment that I love personally. Yes. It's termed, what would you do? Yes. So this is the concept. I've got questions in here that have come from our audience. Yeah. We've uh, computed them. You're going to pick one, read it out aloud. And yes. And then answer how best fit you see. Sure. This one says, you have 24 hours to think of a brilliant business idea for $5,000 grant. Which three areas would you search for inspiration? So I think this one, it's perfect. Yeah. Because you've sat on the Simba Savannah yes. uh, panel. Yes. <clears throat> and a lot of people have presented them to you. Yeah. And all that. Now, putting you in the, feet, in the, in the position of a young uh, person. Yes who's got an idea, you want to win a grant. Yes. But again, stepping out of that young person, giving him a, a, a advice on three places within our economy now yes. to look at, to ensure that they build a business that is sustainable and that will win their grant. Sure. Where would you advise them? 
Well, if this, I, I, I mean, it doesn't matter, not even to just young people, even to the older generation. If, if you want to build a sustainable business or a, 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 a profit-making business, yeah. any time, you must look at need. Okay. That must supersede your, your desires. What are the requirements at this particular agenda? What are the need? For example, three things I would look at. Energy in the country. Okay. Is it, the country is in dire straits. There's no fuel. Uh, the, the, we've got power cuts now and again. The, this, you, a lot of people might look at them as problems. But to me, they're opportunities. Mm. How can you bridge the gap between... Um, the, 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 the suppliers and the consumers, so to make sure that this fuel is there, approach government to find a way to. And those people who are problem solvers are always millionaires yes. at the end of the day. So, energy sector, and then obviously, uh, health sector is a huge facet. Uh, I, I would really, I've not gone into health sector, but eventually, I think I'm, we, we as a group are looking into it. How can we go into then? last one but not least infrastructure okay there's okay. serious need of rehabilitation of infrastructure in this country that's a massive opportunity so if you are not cooking sata yeah. if you are a small small player there are many roads now being you know built or being made track them up with and, and, and talk to them and cook sata for them every lunch and tell them that and so you are you're already seeing there's money here okay so infrastructure rehabilitation is massive money if you can afford to buy earth plant equipment, hire it out, there's a lot of money. Yeah. Can, so there's opportunities everywhere. I like that all your examples are, are very, they, you break them down to the most basic Absolutely. state because it's, it's very sad that a lot of people who are rich and wealthy, mm. they never are able to tell us of the small, simple ideas. Yes. Now, I'm sure that we've got people in the audience who have been watching yeah. and are keen on knowing where to find you to, in order to be, to, to be ground further with your knowledge and your wisdom. Where do they find you? You're not on social media. They must, they must that's why we created the shift, okay. because you can't access me directly. But you know, people must go to the website of the shift, look for me there, and when we, they will find me. Um, it's not about me personally, it's an idea, because I will be very honest, I won't have time to sit with all the people who want to sit with me but I will find ways to ensure that uh, we help them if I possibly can at any wow. given time. Thank you so much for this. Uh, Thank you very beautiful. much. I love the set. We Thank should, you. Yeah, we should have tea here. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're very honored because we know that your time is, uh, is, is valuable. Sure. And for all those that were watching, it was a priceless moment right now. And uh, we, we really do hope that you've soaked in everything that you could. Pursue all that you were taught and that you've learned here. As you know, this is Mentorous Live. Our goal is to expose you to people with their ideas and dreams who are making an impact. And we hope that we can help you become legend. Until next time, tune in, tell a friend. We'll see you again.